This was the moment I thought that I got my one penny rocket to work. No. But then... The ejection system didn't work and the rocket crash landed. A little upset, I launched it again. But you have to wait a little to see what happened. This video is about how I got to this point and how I think we can go further. Two months ago, I posted a video where I challenged myself to build a model rocket with one penny that runs on the little sugar rockets I developed. It didn't end well, but apparently you guys like to see stuff not work. I then promised to put out a video two weeks later about a hopefully successful attempt. If you're watching this a week or two after upload date, then here's that video right here. Two months later, here I am. Sorry, I didn't factor in end of year testing. So here's version two. The rules are the same. I can't buy anything for over a penny, and I can't use anything I already have that is specialized for rocketry. I'm allowed to use my 3D printer. Again, if either of these videos hit 200 likes, I'll re-attempt this challenge as a two-stage vehicle, and that time, no 3D printer. So drop a like if you want to see that. I'm going to make a few adjustments to the design, though. The last flight looked like it failed because the thrust-to-weight ratio was very low, meaning I need to make this version a whole lot lighter. I combined two pieces of cardstock together with a thin strip of paper. I cut off the excess and glued one end to the other. I did something very similar for the engine tube. Also, this version does not have an engine hook, it's just a friction fit. I glued the centering rings to the outside of the engine tube, which had no infill and the walls were just one passive filament. And then I glued the engine mount to the inside of the body tube. Next, I calculated the circumference of the body and divided it into three parts. I taped that around the body and glued the fins where the division lines were. I just reused the launch lug from version 1. Then I fireproofed a kite string with my baking soda and water method. And if you want to know how that works, you can go check out my recovery wanting video. After changing the design of the nose cone to be more mass efficient, I printed it with the conservative settings I used for everything prior. I then printed a second bottom piece that would be used to connect the nose cone to the shot cord and parachute. I then glued this piece to the bottom of the nose cone. I reused the parachute from version 1, and if you want to know how I made that, I recommend checking out the first video. Please. I'm desperate. And with that, the build process was done. The next step was to launch it. I whipped up two of my sugar rockets, and if you click this, this, you can see how to make them for yourself. After that, we headed out to the launch site and set up cameras. It didn't work, but the only damage sustained was one of the fins was a little loose. So it seemed alright to launch again. So we did. The fin broke mid-flight, resulting in this beautiful show of instability and failure. Yeah. Don't fly with the fin gone. So it didn't work. So what? This is engineering and I purposefully made it harder for myself. It's not going to work on the first try and clearly not the second. I probably won't launch TriFi again, at least not in this video. But I still want to talk about improvements. Because just as a little reminder, we can still do something like this if you drop a like below. Here's a cross section of one of the sugar rockets. It burns outward, like this, and then it ignites the delay charge which burns in like that, which causes the ejection charge to ignite and go boom. Or that's what it should do, but all five times we use this engine, it hasn't ignited. Here's the cross section of the new motor design I have in mind. Since the propellant burns outwards, the time it burns won't change, but the amount of matter being burned will increase, and hopefully the thrust will too. That solves our thrust problem, but our ejection charge still isn't igniting. I watched a couple of Estes documentaries. Yes, these exist. Anyways, I found out that they had their ejection charge pressed up right against their delay powder, and then the cap on top of that. This makes sense because there's a lot more surface area making contact with the ejection charge. We could improve this design even further if we end up melting it, like we did in the Sugar Rocket 2.0 video. And you might say, what? Cosmosis? You didn't melt it? 
No, all these launches were on a constrained time schedule, and I didn't think it was going to make much of a difference. Probably does, because when you melt it, all the air gaps in the powder quite literally float to the surface and pop. So you have a lot more propellant in one given space compared to just hitting with a hammer really hard. But it's a lot harder to drill through. Still willing to make that sacrifice though if it means higher thrust. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, sorry for not posting sooner, but I got it out as soon as I could. I mean, this script was literally thrown together on a plane. I put so much time and effort into these videos, and it would mean a lot to me if you subscribed. Thank you, and goodbye.